Well, hello, shiny crafty people, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to take a couple of store-bought placemats and create this fantastic casserole dish holder. So, join me down at the cutting table and I'll show you what we need to get started. To make today's project, we're gonna need two store-bought placemats. These are each 14 by 19. We're gonna need the pan that we're gonna use, and I'm using a 13 by 19 pan, uh, which is, no, sorry, 13 by nine. <laughs> sorry, uh, 13 by nine. And uh, we'll need something to cut with. I also have a, a rotary cutter in case I needed that. I'll really only need that uh, to tie, to make some straps. And I'm gonna make these to create ties that will tie this together. We're gonna need some clips or pins. I'm gonna teach you a really cool way to use a piece of ribbon or uh, thin cord to turn those long strips inside out. We will, of course, also need something to measure and mark with, and I'm gonna use a, a iron to do a little bit of pressing. So let's clear off the space here, and I'll show you how to get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is dismantle the stuff that's on these two, uh, these, these, oh. Where are, my, where are my junk scissors? Oh, here they are. Ooh. I'm gonna go ahead and, and take off all the little parts that, that were used to sell this thing. And those are all gone. Just so no one has to know that we bought these at Walmart for, you know, $4. And the paper tag looks like it's kind of designed to be pulled out, but you might wanna rip off the other fabric tag as well. Now I purchased these, so I'm allowed to cut these tags off. Don't. Don't get stuck in that idea that you're not allowed to take the tag off of a mattress. If you bought it, you can take it off. And I bought this so I can take it off. Pull that off of there. Okay, those are out of the way. Last couple pieces. Now I have to decide, do I want, which side do I want showing out? Well, I think the star of the show is all the pretty fabric. So I'm gonna use that to stick out. But I could, if I want to do one, you know, do this as the bottom side and this is the top. That'd be kind of cute. You could then have double, you know, double duty if you chose to, but I'm not too concerned. I think I'll make it all just the pretty fabric all around. And then I'm gonna lay my casserole dish inside just to make sure we have the right size, okay? Because when I put this together, I wanna be able to stitch the end and then I'm gonna tie this part on the other side. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to sew these two parts together and I have a couple, and sew around the entire outside as well. I have a couple options. When I do that, I could decide, well, I want this to flip and fold this way, which means I would put my straps hemming off and find some way to, to connect them here. Or I could choose to make this a shape that goes this way and has a flap closure like that and goes around. And I actually kind of like this idea a little bit more than the other. And in fact, I will show you how to do it with ties but I also think that I like the simplicity and I'm gonna do mine with Velcro on the inside instead. So zoom back and realize that you're gonna need Velcro as well, but I'll show you both options as a way to make it work. All right, let's first sew these parts together. And what I need to do is sew these two pieces together. I'm gonna to lay them together this way and stitch right along this edge. And I'm just gonna follow the stitching that's already along the the binding that's on there. And I've so I already have white thread in my sewing machine and I'm going to basically stitch this short up edge together. And I'm not too worried about it getting together exactly. I am going to back up at the end and just try to get it as nicely lined up as possible. But it's quite possible that what will happen is here when I open this up and I'll show you, that it's not exactly perfectly lined up. And that's okay, because it's lined up at the other end okay, so I think we should be fine. So we've created this piece. Now, if I wanted to, I could come down and stitch, come and stitch this down, and I'll do that, I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna keep all of the back material underneath, it's all folded off this direction, and I'll come through and use about a, use this quarter inch foot right along the edge and stitch that and just be careful with your machine. You don't want to hurt your machine. This is just going to make it look intentional like it's been tailored this way. 
You can keep that fabric. All right, so that's created a double length of this particular material. Now, if you'd wanted to, I could have, I put these together and I may have wanted to switch them around to where it would be this fabric to that. You could do either way, just turn it around if you're concerned about that. All right, so there's the piece that I put together and I am going to sort of flip it to where it's not completely around. Um, you'll see when I put the, the casserole dish on it, I don't want the casserole dish right in the middle. I'm gonna put it off at a bit of an angle. Like I don't wanna put it right here. I wanna go over a little bit so that I get this point to where it comes to the edge. And then I'll flip this up and over. Now I'm gonna make this specifically for this casserole dish. Understand that. So um, it's gonna depend upon which which item you're putting in it, but I like this 13 by nine pan. I think it's gonna work well and I want it pretty tight. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra room. You'll see in there that I've given myself a little bit of space around it so it's somewhat loose. And I'm just gonna pin this together. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take my clips and clip the, this edge down here together. And at the other side, And then I want to also sort of find where, um, I wanna make sure I, I put one at, I'll measure it myself with my, sort of with my hands. I'll put one here and one a little bit further down, right sort of at the middle so I can line those back up to each other. All right, now I'm gonna take out my pan. So I remove my pan and I'll flatten it out. Look at that and I can transfer my clips. Flatten the whole thing out, both ends. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew along each end, on this end, on the top end, and then when we come back, we're gonna notch out corners so that we make this thing open up. So let's go back to the sew machine and sew down each side. So here at the machine, I'm gonna be really careful and I'm gonna sew just inside those edges. And again, we're working on the wrong side of the fabric. Basically the side that's gonna be in the inside. And I'm just sort of following the line of stitching along this binding. Now, this is where you might want to go slow because you might not have a super strong sewing machine and I don't want you to hurt yourself. You probably should be using a heavier duty needle as you're doing this. Again, we're going to flip out to the other side. Take out our clips. This is actually a really nice thing if you're going to go to somebody's house and you've made them, you're gonna make them, like for a housewarming, you're gonna make them some some uh, accessories for their, their table. You could also bring this for their dining room table as well as, you know, all the other accessories. You brought them, you know, all of the, the placemats or maybe they had those listed on their registry. You could make them something that goes with the placemats. All right, so this is now like an envelope style, right? But we need to figure out how far to pop these corners. And to do that, I'm gonna to need to measure my, uh, my covered baking dish. So I'm gonna use my measuring tool here and see how tall it is on the side. And it's about three inches, two and a half to three inches tall here, which means these corners need to come out about two inches. We're gonna cut about two inches out of this and flatten it. But what I think is a really great strategy, and you know what, I've already made a mistake. So let me go back and tell you, I should not have folded this top, this one in. So I actually need to take that out. I'm gonna need to remove that. So I'm gonna take that out and show you what I mean in just a moment. So both of those I'm gonna take out. So instead I should have just folded this one in and stitched it down. So I'm gonna go back and stitch that. And 
of course, that's because I was going too fast. I, you know, a lot of people might take this out of their video and not show it to you, but I'm going to show you the mistake that I made because I think uh, I was talking too fast and should have told you not to do that one, but I didn't. All right. So what we're going to get is we're going to put our casserole dish in there and we have a couple options. We could just put our Velcro on it and have it finished this way, which is fine. Or I could box those corners so that it could do it. I kind of like leaving it as an envelope style. So in fact, I'm not gonna do any more to it. I am going to come back and turn it inside out. So now that I've made the envelope style, I need to go ahead and turn it inside out. And so I'll do that right now. And, ooh. And I actually think that I'm going to leave this as sort of an envelope style rather than boxing the corners. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's actually pretty hard to do, especially with all this material, but also I don't actually think that it's necessary. I think this is soft enough that it won't be a problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically create this to fold, go right in here. I'm gonna add the Velcro and it'll close up. So cute and be your, your piece. So let me show you how to make that happen. So one of the parts about creating an envelope style like this is you have to figure out how you wanna close it here. Now that could perfectly work perfectly fine to be sort of this look, but I kind of don't like the, the flappy edges sticking up this way. So in fact, what I'm gonna do is open this up and sort of fold this in to create a design so that when it does fold shut, it looks a little more I'll show you what the other one will look like too. Looks a little more professionally closed. I think that's gonna look nicer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and measure how far I want to fold in. And I'll tell you what I have chosen and you can decide if you want it. I'm gonna take two inches in. So what I'll do is I'll measure over two inches with my ruler. And if I'm gonna do the clip method, I'll just put a clip at two inches, okay? I'll do the same on the other end down here. go over two inches and put the clip at the two inch mark. And now I know what I need to do is fold each of these over. And I'll just go from this point where it's already starting, it's already starting to fold down here because of the natural seam that I stitched in. So I'll use that as my other mark and just go two inches in, look, and then I'll put some clips along the edge. Then what I'm gonna come back and do is stitch that down as I go along to that fold. Let me do the same thing over here and show you. I'll take that out of there. It already is naturally folding here because um, this is the interior fold. So I'll just go ahead and use that fold to my advantage. Here we go, look at that. Take that clip out and continue it down. Ooh, I'm telling you I like these clips a lot. All right, so I'm gonna come along and stitch down here, all the way down, here, down, and I'll put my Velcro on at the same time. So I'm gonna get a piece of Velcro that I will use to cover over the, these two flaps, all the way over. Once those are done, I'll stitch across, sew down, come back, stitch the Velcro on, down, and back up. And then we'll figure out where to add the Velcro on the, uh, on the rest of the piece. So I'm gonna add the elastic, or sorry, <laughs> So I'm gonna add Velcro to this end. And I like to put the harder side of the Velcro on the piece that comes off so that the softer side that you might touch here isn't gonna... So I'm gonna add the elastic... So I'm gonna add the Velcro here to the, the flap and to the other end. I like to put the softer side here where you might actually have to touch it. You're more li less likely to touch the this part of it too often. So I want it to, to not possibly snag you here. It's gonna be on this edge. So we'll take the harder stuff and um, I just have some three quarter inch stuff here and I'm gonna stitch it along this point at the top. And I'm just gonna sort of measure out with my, with my hand to where that would make the most sense to fit. 
And then while I'm doing it, I'll go ahead and, and cut the other piece as well to match it. And in fact, um, you might decide you wanna do some, like a double line of it further along if you thought you were gonna have more than one size. Like you could have some that goes to here and some that goes further in or some that goes less in depending upon how wide you might have as a, as a container. So I have this one and the easiest way is literally just to, to mate the two and then decide how long it needs to be. So that matches exactly. And in fact, one of the fun things about Velcro is um, it grabbed my thread and unthreaded my machine. Now I have my machine, like I said, threaded in white because that's this, the color um, that is quilted into this piece that's already pre-quilted. My apologies if you see my head, I just have to be able to see where to... I have an automatic threader, but it doesn't always work. I've never, I'm not a big fan of those. I think they don't always work right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm not even gonna clip this on, I'm just gonna hold it with my hands, but you could, if you had big enough clips, hold it in. And in fact, I'll try, but we'll see if they'll actually hold. Oh, they do actually. So I'll, I'll clip just so that I look like a, like a professional. And I'm gonna do it across these to just hold those pieces. I can't hold onto the clips. Hold those pieces in. Nicely done, okay. So I'll come back here and just start stitching. Take that out. I have found part of what makes you look professional is some consistency. So using the same sort of stitch lengths as you go along, you know, making it look consistent. I'm gonna make take my stitch on the outside about the width of my presser foot as I go down. And then in fact, I will come, I'm not gonna go all the way through this other fabric, right to the edge of it and then turn. And then come close to the edge on the other side. I'm just moving all that in there and getting it out of my way. Ooh. There we are. And then I'm gonna come back up this stitch. I'm getting really close to the edge of that actually. Now I'm going to, it's, it's funny, I, I want this to have a, as few stitchings on the other side as possible. So I'm gonna do a really odd thing here. I'm gonna come along and stitch back to the end of that and then turn it back around and go back the other direction. This is where having a deep throat plate or a, a wider throat, plate, throat on this machine really helps me. And again, I'll go past where I'm gonna stitch just to get that end covered. And then I'll turn back around again. Ooh. And come to this point where I need to start stitching back. And I got, I, if I look at the other end, I got really close to that edge there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get close to that edge as I stitch it back. Now you certainly could Stop halfway through and start again on your, you don't have to put it through the, the throat like I'm doing here. You could stop and start again if you wanted to, but I'm gonna, I like just getting it all in one pass. All right, lift it up. And again, I used about the width of my presser foot along the edge there. So I wanna, again, I wanna look professional. I'm gonna be consistent to the other side. And now here's where I come back to where I started, turn it, Come back to where that thread's hanging off. There we go, and I could trim that thread off. And now I've closed that in, and on the other side, you can barely even see where those stitches are. All right, let's go put the other piece on and then uh, pin, clip it on, and then you may have to pin it, and uh, we'll figure out where to put it. Go back to the cutting table for that. All right, here's our finished piece that I finished stitching all of these parts along, and now I've got to figure out where to put the other piece of Velcro. So I'm gonna put my pan in there. I'm gonna lift it up, and I have to decide how tight do I want it to be? Do I want it to be super tight? Is it gonna live with this pan forever? Do I need to make it looser? You know, I could. I kind of like the idea of putting it right along this line you see here, because it's gonna give me a nice straight line, and it makes it kind of tight. I actually like that. I'm no fan of big, of sort of simplicity. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. So I'll use this mark to be where it's gonna be. And 
Let me just sort of look and see. Okay, that's perfect. I'll slide this back over to that. And I will actually use some pins here because frankly, I don't think the clips are gonna reach through there. Now, I'm not having to worry about what I'm going through because in fact, this is, there's no other layer under there. I have this, the casserole dish. I'm going off at an angle, but you could, of course, you could put these pins in this direction, but I'm not worried about moving this as much as this direction. So I'm going opposite direction of which way I'm worried about it moving. Does that make sense? If I was worried about it moving this way, then I would put the needles in this direction to keep it from going that way. Because here's a good example, I'll show you. If I put the pin in like this, right? It can still move quite a bit that way. But by going this direction, see the, they're put together, they can't. So I wanna put it sort of the opposite of the perpendicular, because I remember math and geometry settings, perpendicular to what I'm wanting to make sure doesn't move. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the machine and stitch that in there. And in fact, I probably should have stitched that on before I started all of this and sewing it together, but I'm going backwards. So you could, if you wanted, figure this out in advance, but frankly, I think it's nice to be able to play with it. If I was doing another one, I would know how in advance how far to do that and uh, I would do it in advance. All right, let's go back to the sewing machine and I'll figure out how to sew this on. So one of the things I'm gonna need to do is sort of open this up. I'm gonna flatten it a bit like this and put it in the machine and stitch it and just make sure I don't catch the fabric from the other side. So I will stitch the end on like that using my needle down position and then flatten it out, pull my pin out. And again, just keep making sure I'm not getting that fabric stuck underneath. I really like having this line that I can see. So if, if I didn't have that, if I was sewing on a, a, on a uh, fabric that didn't have a line like that, I would wanna mark it on or pin this in quite a few more places. And I just sewed over my pin there cause I'm not, I'm so, used to using the clips now, I don't use the pins much anymore. This is actually a pretty fast project. It may not look like it the way I'm doing it, but if you did some of this stuff in advance, you'd actually do, you know, like if you sewed this on in advance. I like showing you all the things though that I probably shouldn't have done, so that's kind of fun actually. And the, the one that I did before, uh, I actually uh, didn't put Velcro on it, I did straps. So. All right, and that is, whew, if I can get it out of there, there's that piece of Velcro hooked on there. Let's look at it back at the table. So here it is with the Velcro. I put the casserole dish in there, flip this over, hook with the Velcro, and now I have this really cute casserole dish. Now I did say, before I show this off to you, I am gonna show you what I would do if I was using strips to hook it together. I would um, I would have to cut some strips out of this material. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna have, let's say I'm gonna make some ties. I'll get myself, uh, basically what I need is, I need two inches uh, by, depending on how long you want your ties to be, two inches by, let's say I'm gonna go, this, is, this material is, 30 inches long. So I'm gonna do a two by 30. So I'll cut it a two inch by 30 strip here using the rotary cutter and a, and a grid. Okay. And then I'm gonna use this sort of ribbon that I have. Now you might use some other kind of ribbon, something strong that can be pulled, maybe a little bit of rope or twine. And I'm gonna go ahead and iron this in half so let me get my, my iron over here. I'll press it in half. And I'm gonna press it wrong sides, the right sides together like this. Oh, I'm almost out of water there. And I'll just press it all the way down. And what I'm gonna do next is I am going to open it back up 
right here and put my ribbon down through the middle and make sure it's longer out one side here. Put it right into the fold so I won't accidentally stitch it. I'm gonna stitch it down here and then stitch down the side. And I'm gonna use this ribbon to turn the whole thing inside out. So let's go to the sewing machine. I'll show you how to do this. All right, so I come over to the machine and I've got that put together. I'm gonna sew down one side and that will capture that ribbon or that cord that you're using. And just make sure that your ribbon or your cord is not is at least a half an inch skinnier than the piece that you're sewing together. And then I use a quarter inch seam allowance and stitch all the way down the side, keeping that ribbon right, uh, keeping that ribbon on the inside. Now, there are plenty of ways to turn strips like this and things that look like uh, big straws with sticks and that kind of thing. I like this version a lot and here's the reason why, because it's so easy to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold this end, just the outer fabric, see here? I'm not trying to squeeze that ribbon. And then at the other end, I'm gonna grab the ribbon and pull it. And in fact, I wanna show you a little better how this is gonna work. So let me zoom out a little bit. Right, can you see both ends? We can't see both ends. There we go. I'm going to grab this end down here and I'm gonna start pulling it up. See what I'm doing? I'm kind of, I'm holding onto this ribbon and pulling that material. And then as I get to the end here, I wanna give a little bit of room because I wanna be able to turn. I'm gonna hold the outer fabric and let that inner one pop in. You see it started to pop in there? And now I hold the outer fabric and pull. I'm just giving enough pressure to keep the outer fabric from going anywhere. But as I pull the other end, it's turning it inside out. And in fact, pretty soon, I'm gonna to get to where, that's where that point is that's flipped over. I'm gonna to get to where it will turn inside out. Look at that, it's now turning inside out and I can continue that sort of magic trick of just spinning it inside out. And now I've got about a half inch strip, wide strip, that I can then iron and stitch if I want or just use in this nice strip to, to tie the ends of my piece. So if I were gonna use this here, I might, um, I'll cut this off the end here Right, and I might say I might want to flatten this back out with my, my iron and I would use cut it in half, tie off the ends and I could sew it in here and make a tie that would create a tie to close this entire thing off. And then you could tie it off instead of doing it with the other. That's not very pretty, but I think you get an idea how I would do that by looking at this. So what I would do is I would cut this in half, I just fold it in half and then if you wanted to, you could flip the ends in or you could just get real cute and tie them in a knot to give it a very rustic sort of look. Look at this. Isn't that cute? Just tied a knot in the end there. Same thing on the other one, if you wanted to. So now you have those two things. I would stitch one here rather than the elastic, stitch it on. Stitch the other one, let me pull it back a little and put it under, you'll see what I mean. Stitch the other one maybe down here, fold it over and double stitch it. And then you could tie this together to create a really cute tied piece. See how that would work? Ooh. And you might decide that 30 inches is not enough and you want to do more. But that would create that cute look for you, folded up look right here, with a cute tie. All right, so that's how you create an envelope style casserole holder with what is essentially two store-bought placemats. 
This is so much fun, so easy, and it's a way for you to either coordinate with what the person uh, you're coming to their house, uh, coordinate with what they already have on their table, or maybe match the rest of some gifts that you've made for them as a really lovely, nice, welcoming gift, or even something bringing this to family Christmas, wherever else. It's soft, it's padded, it's protected, and it's stylish. All right, if you've enjoyed this placemat hack, please like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, stay crafty. Bye for now. <clears throat> oh, I just wish it had something in it. Ooh, brownies.